Hey guys, how's it going? So I'm out here in the garden doing a little bit of maintenance. In fact, I want to take you guys back to the back formal garden where I need to cut back some lilies and do some deadheading and things like that. Um, but I wanted to take a moment and sit down and kind of cool off um, because we are approaching afternoon. I don't think it's supposed to get 100, but it's supposed to get pretty close. But I wanted to talk about how we maintain our grounds and how we deal with weeds and deadheading and how we stay on top of it, which we aren't 100% on top of it, but I think it's pretty good. We've got a really good system down. Um, so I thought I would show you like my whole grid system and everything. I mean, I've talked to you guys about it before, but I'm not sure that I've actually showed you like how I have it organized and mapped out so that each area of our garden gets looked at every single week. So what I ended up doing was I had Aaron print me out. Let me, let me get it for you. I had him print me out an overhead shot of our garden. So you can see, let's see, you can see the house right here. There's the front sidewalk. So our new property's out this way. There's the barn back here, the greenhouse, and then there's the back formal garden where we're gonna work today and so forth. So you can see that and you can see I've got it all colored in. Each color represents a zone in the garden and we have five different zones so that each zone gets worked on at least once a week. So right here, I have a corresponding list. So Monday zone is blue, which is this area right here that goes behind the barn and greenhouse and along the west side and just the west side of the house. And I tried to break it up based on how much work each area is. And one area may look small compared to like this huge area, but this huge area doesn't require very much maintenance because most of it's the Versailles garden, which is a lot of gravel and a lot of grass. There's not a lot to do in that area. So I tried to group everything together to where it all was kind of in the same vicinity, but it would require about the same amount of work. So each day, um, every zone is looked at for weeds, any grass edging that might need to be done. I need to fan myself, hold on. <sighs> So weeds, grass edging, deadheading, and then any insect issues that are going on and then we handle those as we see it. So basically what that does is it frees your brain up from thinking about all the other areas of your garden because you're like, this is all I need to focus on today. Usually only takes like an hour. It doesn't take very long because if you start working on those zones at the very beginning of the season, when things start to put on growth, um, you never really have a problem because if you're, you're weeding that area once a week, it never has a chance to really get out of control. And of course there are areas that require a little bit more maintenance at different times of the year. So like say if the roses are blooming and you're having to do more deadheading this time of year, well that usually means that in another area, um, something like another area may be less maintenance than it is at another time of the year, if that makes sense. But it helped me out so much to zone my garden because all of a sudden, like I just knew, I knew that um, every area was gonna get looked at and I didn't need to even look at the other spaces. It's like not a big deal. I look at everything for water. If I see weeds, it doesn't matter because I know later on that week they'll be handled. And then um, like if I'm working on a zone and I something comes up or I don't have enough time and we need to work on a video or whatever, then um, I can know I can work on that the next day after I'm done with that day's zone. So if that makes sense. So let's say Monday, didn't get the zone quite done, but Tuesday zone, you get that all done and you've got extra time at the end of the day, then you just work on what you didn't get done in the Monday zone and it always works out. Like there's always a balance there. It always tends to work okay. Hey Russell. In terms of tools, this is pretty much it. Um, we don't do any tool weeding in our flower beds at all. I don't think that it's effective. Um, that's the other thing. Like if you're just using like a, I don't know, winged weeder. I used to try to sneak those in when I would weed my parents' garden. Um, they would uh, task us with like weeding the entire vegetable garden, which at that point seemed massive. Um, and they didn't really have a good mulching system at that point. So there were quite a few weeds in my defense, but we would try to sneak that winged weeder in there and just chop them off at ground level and rake them up quick because it was a lot faster than hand pulling, but the roots are still there. So you're chopping them off, it's temporary fix, and then they grow right back. So I prefer hand weeding all the time. So really the only tools that you may need are your gloves if you like to use them, which I like, if I use gloves, I rarely use them, but if I do, they're Atlas Nitro gloves right here. They're pretty thin. I just recently got a pair of Felco gloves that are nice and thin too. Um, so I've been using those a bit more and a kneeling pad. That's it. That's what we use. Oh, and my kangaroo puppet bag. I can't forget that. You guys know this bag like collapses. It's pretty awesome. It collapses down. Uh, Russell is totally on my lap and you're cramping my style, bud. Anyway, it collapses down like this. 
So you can just slide it in somewhere in your garage or something. It doesn't take up a lot of space like a garbage can. And then it just pops right open and provides a lot of space for a lot of debris. Um, and it's very lightweight. It has a hard bottom. So there are two different kinds of pop-up bags, more than two, there's different sizes, but there's a soft bottom bag, which I wouldn't even bother with. And then there's the hard bottom bag. That's the only way to go because once you get a little bit of weight in these, for me anyway, like Aaron can lug them around, but I drag them around when they get heavy. And so the hard bottom eliminates any tearing. Now in the new property, we do have that zoned as well. Um, so you know that it's set up kind of in a just a big like full rectangle system with a fence around it so each rectangle is a zone so this rectangle gets it Monday this rectangle Tuesday Wednesday Thursday and then on Friday the whole exterior like the exterior five or six feet around the fence um, gets weeded and I've actually since I've talked about the zoning system in a few past videos I've seen a few of you say that you implemented that kind of system and it can be on any scale it doesn't have to be like our size of garden or bigger gardens or that sort of thing like working gardens are is kind of I consider it a working garden um, you know I, I feel like any size of garden can be put into zones and treated that way because then and you can do it based on your schedule like maybe you know you like to do a little bit more of the work on a Saturday so you allot yourself a bigger section or maybe you can only work two days a week out there and so you can kind of split your garden in half um, that sort of thing if that makes sense or maybe like you go to church on Wednesday nights or you have a meeting on Thursday night so you can kind of you know after work you can kind of um, break up your schedule and break up the zones based on what works best for your schedule and it just gets so much less overwhelming and I've just heard such good things from those of you who have messaged me and said I did a zone system it is amazing like my garden has stayed so much more manageable and so much more enjoyable because nothing has ever gotten out of hand and so I go out and do my little, you know, sometimes it's like just a 10 minute zone or a 15 minute zone and then I can actually enjoy myself and I don't feel like I have to go weed the whole garden. So one more time, a quick look at our zones. Okay, hold on. I gotta reorient myself with this picture. So Monday zone is behind the greenhouse and barn along the west side and then along the west side of the house. Tuesday zone is around our kitchen flower bed and like around our fireplace and brick patio area, which is kind of where I'm sitting right now. Um, let's see, Wednesday zone is red. So Wednesday zone is around our gazebo, chicken coop, kind of that big Hebe statue underneath the weeping willow tree area. Uh, let's see, Thursday zone is green. So that's the front garden and Versailles. And then Friday zone is the back formal garden and the corner garden right there. We also have some weekly tasks as well that we assign a specific day. So fertilizing gets done on annuals every Tuesday. We spray BT, which is that natural occurring bacteria. It's, uh, you might see the label called thuricide. What it is is a natural bacteria that um, you spray on super tunias and super bells and it keeps the budworms away, which we deal with horribly bad. If we do not spray for them every week, we will get the problem and then it's almost not worth planting our flowers. Um, Wednesday, no, that was Wednesday, so Thursday we spray. Um, so the only weed control we do by spraying is our graveled areas and the perimeter around our new property. We've done a video about it, we'll link it down below. We typically um, only use sprays in those areas. We don't use sprays on the interior of our garden, nowhere near around edibles, um, both in here and out in the new space. It's basically just to take care of the really problem weeds like the bindweed, uh, puncture vine and spurge and stuff like that. So that's basically all I wanted to sit and talk with you guys about. Just run through our schedule, what we do on a weekly basis to keep on top of everything. And like I said, it's never 100% weed free. It's never 100% free of problems. There's stuff everywhere. Like I'm looking at just tons of plants that are just like flopped over. I need to cut them back. Um, you know, some trees need some maintenance. There, I've got some issue trees that have some problem branches every year. Like the whole tree looks good, but one branch yellows up and drops a bunch of leaves and junk everywhere. And that's happening right now. So no garden is free from issues and I used to think that there were gardens that were free of issues and now when I look at I used to feel like this like when we go tour estate gardens I'm like this garden is perfect but now I look back at pictures I'm like no they're dealing with something on their boxwood hedges look at that like you look at things with more of a critical eye and you're like we're all in the same boat together we all have the same issues we have the same things that we're dealing with but if you keep it on a schedule it makes it much much better, much easier to manage. So let's head to the back garden and basically I'm just using the tools I showed you. My clippers, my, uh, oh I didn't show you my clippers, but I don't use my clippers for weeding, that's why I didn't show you. I'm using Felco's today, my kangaroo pop-up bag and my kneeling pad. Let's head back there. So here we are, I wanna do a little bit of maintenance in this flower bed right here. First of all, we've got the fluffy, which is looking awesome. 
We planted Fluffy last year, so it's a Fluffy Arborvita, but we need to work on freeing Fluffy from all this Tratoscantia. So you can see this is also called Spiderwort, and it's just like slowly encroaching on this poor plant. So I'm gonna do a little trimming away from the fluffy i've got a rose right here it's just a land i don't know what kind it is but it's so pretty i love it. it was here when we moved in just like a landscape type rose shrub rose with beautiful simple yellow flowers but i need to do just a little bit of cleanup a little bit of deadheading these lilies right here you can see what they look like when they're all in bloom i think they're really beautiful and i love the texture of these so much but I'm gonna come in and deadhead all of the splint, uh, spent bloom stalks. This is the little flower bed we planted a couple of years ago. It's starting to fill in the Winecraft Black. So I've noticed when this plant starts putting on growth, it looks a little wild for the first year or two, and then after that, it starts to thicken up. So that's what we've got going now. So we've got Wizard of Oz Veronica that needs to be cut back. Those were all the blooms. Can you imagine when that was full of purple? I just never got back here to show you guys. We still have the Japanese anemones coming up. This whole area was Japanese anemone. And like, had I planned better, I would have tried to eradicate that and then left this the whole flower bed empty for a year while I kept eradicating it because it just keeps coming up everywhere. We've got the hydrangeas, which actually struggled a little bit at the beginning of the season, but they're starting to come out of it, starting to look okay. These are the mini mauvettes. See right there, the color, so pretty. And this is a spent bloom right here. Um, and they're all here and they're all doing okay. So one, two, three, four, five. Um, but they just, they had some struggles in the beginning. I planted a Bathsheba, a climbing rose right here this spring. We've got the um, pink diamonds Dicentra right there. I popped in earlier this spring. A couple of hookahs, And then we've got the Serendipity Allium, which, oh, aren't those just amazing? They are so, so beautiful, but see, I want to come in and clean up around the base. Just kind of tidy those up a little bit. We've got a hibiscus I totally forgot I planted. I mean, I kind of remember now, but I kind of forgot it was back here. I can't remember what variety that is. Dang, I'll try to find out. A massive black lace elderberry, which I cut way back this last year. They just grow like crazy here. And then this is the section of lilies here. I really just think I want to cut this whole section back. It just looks just kind of bad. Look at that, like kind of all flopped over. It looks especially bad from the other side, all yellowed out. So we'll cut these back and they'll have time to flush some leaves by the end of the season, but it'll look good just to have it cleaned up. We've got a Miss something. <laughs> what is that one? Miss Ruby, butterfly bush. Look at that, isn't that pretty? I need to do better about cutting it back this year so that the blooms are a little bit lower. And then we've got one of the tower type black lace elderberry. What is that called? Laced up. So it grows skinny rather than big around. And then moving on, we've got more lilies, which need a little bit of deadheading. I like the color of these quite a lot. We've got a Miss Violet Budlea right here, which I cut back properly last year. See the difference? And then we've got a blue chiffon Rosa Sharon that's looking amazing at that and then a pot that I never planted this year because I'm on it like that and then if I have time left there are some irises over here on the other side of the garden where I have really planted basically nothing there's really not a whole lot I've done back here um, but they need a little bit of cleanup so I'm underneath the weeping willow and these are super easy to clean up I just need to kind of rake through them with my hands and get the spent leaves out same goes for this side right under the sensation box elder I've also mentioned quite a number of times that we haven't done a whole lot to this garden because one, I do like the simplicity of it. I love like, I like the boxwood hedging. I like the urn in the background and there's one right there as well. It's very simple and it's very like, it's breathing space. I think every garden needs that. An area where it's not like, you know, so much going on and so much hardscape and so much, so many plants of various types. I feel like this is very peaceful even though I haven't, like there's tons of open space to plant. But we haven't done a lot because we had been toying with different ideas of what we wanted to do with this space. So I didn't really want to go, you know, really heavy on planting new things just to have to rip them out. I do know whether or not we keep this garden kind of the same, we're going to have to address the sprinkler system in here. We're going to have to uh, rip it up and do something new because let me show you. We're dealing with some major brown spots like around the boxwoods in particular. And then this right here was completely brown last week. It's looking really good. I've been very diligent about putting sprinklers on it every single day. 
um, but it did look just like this, like this whole section. Can you imagine that? Like it kind of started out big and then it tapered off toward the urn. It was weird. So we're working on it, but this right here, I don't want to have to do this. If we have a sprinkler system, I do not want to have to be dragging sp other sprinklers around. That seems kind of silly. Okay, so now I'm gonna get after the work, get this done, and then we'll take a look. go get a bigger wagon that all needs to fit somewhere Didn't expect it to come toward my finger. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I 
have a totally full load of debris here and everything is looking a little bit better, a little bit more tidy. So let me give you a little tour. Starting at the beginning, we've got the spider work cut away from Fluffy just a little bit and I think it looks a lot better. There's more airflow, you can see like the gap and it's like that all the way around. Deadheaded this rose, which really didn't take much at all. So now it looks really clean and fresh. And isn't this sedum spectacular? I think this is Autumn Joy right here and it produces the most beautiful pink blooms. And then I did plant a golden chain tree here last year. This is the arborvita I tied up in a video. I think it was in a video. I got in the middle of that and it's actually tied to the fence because it had split in half um, when the elm tree fell on it, which was a total bummer, but I think it, it worked out. Got the lilies deadheaded and that looks so much better. And this spot actually looks a lot better too. I pulled all of the Japanese anemone that I could find and I like that plant. I've got it in other places of my garden, but right in this spot, see how much sun it gets? It's like this all day and the anemones just burned. By this time of year, they were so burned usually when it was a full patch of them, it just looked really bad. So I thought that these things would look better. Got the Veronica cut back, did a little cleanup on the hydrangeas and cleaned up the base of the alliums. And they're not perfect, you guys, none of these are. I just like to get at least the front part of the plants looking good. It's kind of, it kind of gives the illusion that every, everything is really tidy. But like, if you look in the center, like if you were to look in here, you'd see all the yellow leaves. I don't like try to clean them all out. There were more lilies underneath this elderberry that I didn't see until I was out here working right here. I deadheaded those, cut back a salvia. And then this is the spot where all of those mangy lilies were. So it looks a little sad right now. In fact, you can see right here that it doesn't even allow the grass to grow because they get so big and just cover the grass. But these will rebound in no time. Left those lilies because they're a different kind and they look pretty good. And then deadheaded these, which it's interesting because there's two different kinds. There's this kind here that's the pinky color. And then there's another kind, which is absolutely beautiful. This is probably my favorite one. Look at that. Oh. That's the only bloom left of that variety. But so the pink ones, which there's three, one, two, three, and then there's three peach ones in between. The peach ones are done and the red ones are still going, or I don't know, reddish pink. Anyway, so that's interesting. I didn't plant them here. Um, I planted the Budlea and the Hibiscus, and then there's some Coral Charm pe uh, peonies in here, peonies, however you pronounce it. And then there's an Acanthus right there. But yeah, these were here. I like the texture. And then swinging over to the irises, I really didn't spend a lot of time on these, to be honest, because I felt like I was trampling them more than, more than anything. Um, so I cleaned dead leaves out of there. This side looks a little bit better. They were more upright anyway. So if you were to look in there, they're just more fresh. I really didn't even go into that section back there because I'd have to step around. So you can see in here, they were kind of flat anyway, and then I think I made it a little bit worse, to be honest. And then I ended on these irises right here. And there's the proof right there. <laughs> and that's pretty much it for today's project. It felt so good to come out here and tackle some of the stuff back here. And this was not part of today's zone, by the way. Um, usually if you're done with the zone, like if I get that done, then you can move on to other projects that um, maybe take a little bit more time. And you know, usually um, you can kind of gauge how much time you've got in the day to get your zone done. And uh, my priority, is insects are insects and weeds um, you want to get on top of any insect issue you find right away and you want to stay on top of weeds and deadheading next and then just like general grooming like the iris grooming not super high on the priority list because it's really hidden in the back here and it really you can't see all the dead leaves unless you come right up on them so you kind of figure out what to prioritize in each zone. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys just to know how we try to organize our space and we're constantly trying to improve um, how we organize and how we go about things. Um, and yeah, I mean, it just makes life so much easier, especially when you've got a big space. But even if you have a small space and you're a busy person, you have a busy life, you've got lots of kids at home or you um, work full time I and mean, there's all kinds of life things and all of our lives are a little bit different. So I don't know, it just is nice to stay organized. And I am not organized all the time. Like I'm way more organized outside than I am inside for sure. Um, but it's nice to at least have one area of my life feel like I've got it kind of together. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful and um, maybe motivational. It is hot. We still have to get out and garden to keep things up. It's just the way it is, nature of the beast. So anyway, thank you guys so much. We'll see you in the next video, bye.